Welcome, welcome. My name is Aoife and I am a transformational health coach for highly sensitive women. I help highly sensitive women to heal themselves from anxiety, depression, chronic pain and chronic illness using mind-body techniques. And today I have one of my beautiful, amazing clients, Caitlin, and she is going to be telling us a little bit about her story of having migraines and PMS and anxiety, and um, then like really your journey of learning how to um, heal these yourself and what, what that's been like and what that looks like. So welcome, welcome. Do you want Thank to introduce you. yourself anymore? Sure. Yeah. You know, I can just say I'm a business owner. So my health is really important. You know, like when I'm out for the day, the business is out for the day. So um, yeah, meeting you has totally changed my life, which we'll get into here in the next few moments. Sweet. Um, so let's circle back to when we first met and um, what were you like struggling with and what were you trying what were you using to try and overcome it? So like when you were like up shit Creek, like what was going on for you? Yeah. So I struggle with high blood pressure as well. So, um, and I also was diagnosed with PTSD last two years ago, actually back in 2020. So three years ago now, um, so what would happen to me is like, I would become really frantic without even knowing that I was like out of my body and not present. So when I first got diagnosed, I was doing therapy, um, trying to get more present, but it just wasn't getting me as quickly as where I wanted to be with my healing. Um, so I would struggle with migraines, honestly, on like a weekly basis, it was difficult to get out of the bed. Um, and then coupled with the high blood pressure, like I was very tired. I didn't even notice how tired I was until like, now I have so much more energy, you know? Um, but yeah, it started out would feel really tired, sick. I mean, insane migraines, even when I would overcome the migraine, they would last like days after, um, which I think also just had to do with like dehydration and being out of my body, not even listening to my body. I was listening to one of your chats too, where you all were talking about like ignoring yourself when you have to like go to the bathroom, like when you're working, that was absolutely me. It was like work comes first me, my family, everything else comes last. And I was like the last thing on that list. So the migraines would happen, high blood pressure very frequently, honestly, on a daily basis, if not like 24 seven, I would wake up in the middle of the night with my heart like palpitating. I could feel the blood pressure um, in my body. So I wasn't sleeping well. Um, and yeah, it, it just, I would try to numb it, right? I would try to like leave my body or pour myself into work. Like I'm a total workaholic. So that was the easiest way for me to escape, which was just triggering me more because there was absolutely no rest happening. Um, and yeah, other areas that I would look to was like escaping on the weekends, filling up my week so much that by the time I got to the weekend, I had the migraine, I had to cancel plans with friends, like I wasn't able to have any fun at all. Um, and yeah, I think that that's like a pretty good description of what my life was like, it was not fun, you know? <laughs> I'm glad you can laugh about it now. <laughs> um, and so you were looking at like medication for the, the bad blood pressure stuff and you were doing therapy for the uh, PTSD stuff and um but you were still like um struggling still in that in that cycle that you described so well and um then like how were your relationships looking because I just know personally how much uh, stress and strain my own health um when it was bad uh, it put on my relationships yeah. Oh my gosh. My relationships were terrible. You know, when I would have moments with them because I wasn't able to be present because I was dealing with all of these symptoms internally, I would lash out, you know, I wasn't able to give them like fruitful, rich conversations, good feedback, you know, like even being like a good partner, you know, I was literally not present at all. I was actually just thinking about this yesterday. 
after work, it would be like after five o'clock here and I would still work into the evening. So I wasn't even eating dinner with my boyfriend, like literally food didn't matter. Like nothing would stop me from working. Um, so yeah, my relationships in my household were not good. I was ignoring my puppy's needs, you know, like it trickles over into every one else's area of, of their lives, especially with my mom as well. Like I wasn't able to communicate the way that I wanted to with her to have a great relationship. Um, and with my friends, like I said, I would have to cancel all the time because my symptoms were so crazy. So I wasn't even really able to develop deeper relationships into my later twenties because I just wasn't able to be present. And that's a really scary feeling <laughs> like for anybody listening that feels that just know you're not alone and these symptoms are real. And it also can turn into social anxiety, which is kind of what started to develop. It was like easier to focus on my symptoms than go out with friends, especially after 2020. So I kind of used it as a crutch, you know, to stay at home, which just isolated me more and more. And I know so many highly sensitives deal with the isolation as well. Yeah, thank you for sharing so openly. I can super relate, obviously, to everything that you're sharing and the way that you talk about um, not being present. And um, like, I know, like, it, that's a very common word that's used these days. But when you are just like, so kind of tormented by symptoms and pain and migraine and anxiety and like stressful thoughts and emotions, um they are it's just so distracting like it's so distracting um to to just be in that in that world and you're kind of like alone in it because you're like well I don't really know what it is like and I like, don't really so you're kind of alone in it and that adds the isolation and for sure I know everyone in this same boat can relate to the symptoms stopping them from doing things so then isolating more but then maybe getting kind of just used to this world of your own you and your symptoms and kind of then sometimes like leaning on that more than than going out and and like I had a client say the other day she's like in that you know when you get in that mindset of like why bother like you know your self-worth is so low you've you haven't connected to people in so long. You're not feeling that connection and joy. You're like, well, why, why bother go out or do anything? And I love also something that you that you touched on, which is the, the I know everyone in this boat with, with symptoms and stress illness can relate to uh, not knowing really how to take care of themselves in such a basic way. Like you uh, reminded me of that, like not um, going to the toilet when you need to go to the toilet, like um, just being so disconnected from my body that I, I wouldn't even notice I was if I was sitting in a freezing cold room for like a whole day, uh, you know, I, I would just be like, or a dark room, someone would come in and say like, is the light not on? Or are you not freezing? And you're like, oh, oh yeah, I am actually just so used to like, boom, 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 numbing myself and pushing or putting other people for, forward or um, uh, work or whatever I can distract myself with. So yeah, I love what you shared. And um, so then we've been working together for a while and doing loads of amazing things together. And I've watched you grow so much, which has been so fun. And um, so tell us a little bit about like, what, how, how are things different? Like, how are your symptoms? Everyone wants to know like what's going on with symptoms because when you first come to this work, you're just like, this is how, like, what is going on? I need a break. So start with the symptoms. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be very honest. Like I'm not on any blood pressure medication. I don't take daily medications, um, for any of the symptoms that I just described. And it's really because of the work that we've done. Um, so when I get up in the morning, like I don't feel high blood pressure when I do experience it, because I love that you always share that as well. Like these symptoms don't go away. You just become more aware of when you're feeling them or what might trigger them, right? Like you just have those uh, signs and you're more connected to your body. So when I am experiencing high blood pressure, I will immediately disconnect from work. Um, 
because I know that it's so much easier for me to like ignore it, ignore it, keep pushing through the day. I'll even cancel meetings and I'll just tell my clients like, Hey, I'm not feeling well. I just am honest, you know, and anybody in my community that isn't willing to accept that, well, then I don't want them there anyway. You know, it's kind of like a level of respect now, um, that I need to respect myself. So that's been very helpful putting up those boundaries, like stepping, I know you're like, that's so different. I'm like, who are you? Like, that is amazing. Like, you know, I'm all about that. Like just saying, speaking up for your needs and saying no. And that's so cool. Love hearing that. Go on, continue. I would take like naps throughout the day too. So like for any entrepreneurs, or even if you're not an entrepreneur, you work from home, even if you work in an office, like you deserve to rest. <laughs> like our society has programmed us not to. Um, so that took a lot of reprogramming, you know, the year of us working together, just tapping in, like, do I need to take a nap? Do I need to go watch one of my crazy shows that I love? You know, like what's going to fill me up and make me feel more present, honestly, once I experience that or give myself that. Um, so yeah, the blood pressure has not been a problem. Knock on wood, everything's going well. Um, and I would say the level of presentness that I have now, like with my family and especially with my puppy, like we don't always know that we are ignoring like these amazing beings in our lives. Even if you don't have a relationship, like she is now my like signaler, you know, like she'll come up to me and be like, okay, we're done. We're done for today. We're done working. Like let's unplug, you know? So it's become such a great reciprocation of energy between my relationships rather than me feeling like I have to pour so much out of myself when I'm in social environments, like I'm able to receive, I'm able to sit there quietly. I don't have to like talk or, you know, totally persuade everyone that I like deserve to be there, which I think a lot of highly sensitives, we just naturally feel like that because that's how we're internalizing our symptoms. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just become really reciprocating with a lot of my relationships. And, you know, when it, when I think about the migraines, they're very few and far between. If I do get a migraine, I know that something is happening out of alignment for me. So I need to redirect or check in with myself. Like what's happening here? Did I put too much on my plate? Am I too stressed? Um, and, you know, focusing for me, like as a business owner, on not setting these expectations that are unobtainable has also been very helpful. It's like I can manifest things without expecting it to come next month. You know, it will come eventually. So that's taken a lot of the pressure, like connected to my blood pressure off of me, um, which has relieved a lot of, you know, pressure with the migraines. Like if you think about a migraine, it makes sense. If you have high blood pressure, of course, you're going to have migraines, you know, it's going to collect in your brain. So just understanding and connecting more to that part of my body and being more in tune has, I mean, it's changed my life. I said to you last week, like nothing physically in my life has changed. I've just changed, you know, like nothing around me has changed. I still have the same people, you know, I think there's this facade in therapy, especially that you kind of have to like cut people out of your life that aren't filling you up or like adding anything. And I completely disagree. You know, everybody is a reflection of us. You know, if we're upset with someone, like I just come back to myself, I'm like, oh, what, what am I dealing with that this person's like bringing up with me, which has again, taken the pressure off as a highly sensitive. I don't want to cut people out of my life. Like that person just might be having a bad day, you know, <laughs> leading with more love and less expectations has definitely helped me. I love, love, love that. I'm so proud of you. You're doing so good. I I'm love, so grateful for you. Yeah. <laughs> I love what you were sharing about the pressure. And like, I know everyone in this boat with these symptoms, because it is pressure on your nervous system. It's stress yeah. and, and it's like stress. So um, um, like the shift in you with like how much pressure you were putting on yourself, like you seem like now when I, like when I met you, you were like, so busy so heightened so stressed and like but I feel like now you're doing like more work but you seem less busy and like you have like less pressure in yourself there's more expansion there you're like I don't know do you want to talk a little bit about that because I just think that's really cool 
Yeah, it's so funny because when I met Aoife, like a little background for the listeners, my business was going through a pivot. Like I was very unhappy with what I was doing. And um, I also wasn't able to hire the right people. So I felt like I, as highly sensitive, like we try something, right? And it doesn't work. And it's like, we're the failure, we're the problem. Um, And I just realized I just didn't have the right people. You know, I just had to find the right people. So now I have a full team. I don't really even work that much. You know, like this work has completely pivoted the way that I think, approach my perspective in life. Everything that I do, I now take into like consideration of my highly sensitivity and my beauty of being highly sensitive. You know, it's, it really is a gift. And like, even some of my friends will be like, oh, after we hang out, you know, it feels like really heavy. And I'm like, well, that's because I just want to have rich conversations. Like we as highly sensitive, we want to get deep, right? Because like, that's how we feel. That's how we experience life. Um, So yeah, just pivoting my business to collect more of those like-minded clients has relieved so much stress. They don't put pressure on me. Like I was put it, put on pressure from previous clients, you know, cause they know me and they also feel the same way. So it's just completely redirected my business. Now I have a team, as I mentioned, so I can step away when I need to just maybe move around some calls, just less like workaholism and constant spinning of my wheels And I think a lot of that came down to the goal setting, you know, it would be like, I have to make this amount of money in 2023. And like, if I don't, like I'm a failure. I was actually just watching this movie with Bradley Cooper. It's called Burnt and he's a chef and he's like trying to get his third Michelin star. And it's literally so much pressure he puts on himself. He almost like, he's very ill from it mentally and physically. And it was such an eye opener to see that like there's other people out there doing exactly what I was doing to myself, you know, and it's just not a way to live. And I really knew that I couldn't survive. Like I would have gotten worse or more sick if I continued on that path. And yeah, the business is thriving. It's so funny when you step away from your symptoms and you get more perspective and you see that there's not just only the pharmaceutical option, you know, you can always do that if that's right for you. It just wasn't right for me. I knew I didn't want that. I wanted, you know, to turn to something holistic first. If I could heal myself, I wanted to try it, you know, and I did it. So I'm so glad that I did. I'm so glad you did as well. I'm so proud of you and all that work that you're describing, all your experience of your work now, it's like, there's just so much more confidence and boundaries and, and like, like, like you said, like this respect for yourself and this dignity for yourself. And I just think when we come in, um, we're living with chronic stress and this low self-worth and perfectionism and everything just have such little like dignity and respect and like care for ourselves and we don't know how to change that and it's just like just trying to live trying to have work relationships trying to um have have personal relationships you're just like like you were describing in that frantic way of living and and it is really stressful and that can show up in in your body in many different ways and um I love how you shared like your migraines you know like they might come and you how you relate to them is is just completely different that they they're subsiding they they don't they're not really around as much but when they do come you just so beautifully described it it's like they what's the message like look to my life and like you just know and that's really what my mission is to instill in all the women that I work with is you know now like you have the tools you have the knowledge you have the confidence you know what's going on and from there you can do anything like you said like maybe you go to the doctor maybe you take a pill for something maybe you get a massage maybe you go to the beach maybe you walk your dog like whatever it is it's it's up to you but you have this core understanding of the mind-body connection and how it applies to you in your life and your symptoms and and that's really what 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 stops all the like you were describing not being present like all this like stress and confusion about the symptoms when you first come along you're like I'm anxious and I have migraines and I have this and maybe it's my hormones and maybe it's my diet and maybe it's 
my um past and maybe it's all these things and you're just like what like what even is it like it's just such a heavy burden to carry and like you're not really getting any straight answers from anyone and you're not really getting any straight solutions from anyone so you're kind of like just juggling this in your own secret world of isolation just like I don't know what to do so like just having you here and like hearing you so confident so clear like you get what's going on for yourself you get how to like keep growing and keep moving forward and and just what you describe, I feel too, like this richness in your, like the way you describe just feeling more connected to your puppy, even yeah. just like that richness in life. Um, and I know when I was like super depressed and sick and anxious, I, I really, I felt so disconnected from people and from life. And for me, the biggest value of this journey, um, which you described is getting that feeling, that richness and that connect. Yeah connectedness to the people or or furry animals or whoever it is that I do love and I do care about or so yeah thank you so much for sharing your journey your total superstar is there anything else that you want to share I I just need to say like to wrap up like if you're dealing with this like you feel broken you know like when I came to you like I felt like the world was on my shoulders. I didn't just have to solve my problems. I had to solve my mom's problems. I was ancestral healing my entire family. You know, I'm dealing with my boyfriend's problems. Like, and I was taking it all on. And that's what we do as highly sensitives. That's how we relate to the world. Like that's how we've learned to relate. And, um, just know that there is always a way out, you know, of every situation, but just because we've been taught that there isn't and that we need to search and there's this mystery behind our health. It's just not true, you know? Um, And I'm so grateful that you taught me that. And yeah, the beauty of life is rich relationships. You know, we all think we want the money, the car, the house, these experiences, you know, but really what it is and what most people will tell you, especially extremely, you know, accomplished entrepreneurs, they're sometimes very unfulfilled. So that was the other motivation for me. It was like, I need to feel fulfilled now because if I keep chasing this money, chasing this dream, thinking that it will fulfill me and then I get there, what an even bigger letdown for a highly sensitive, you know, it's like, oh my God. So that was a huge moment. And also I realized that as a highly sensitive, helping other people, like if I could change my relationships with my family as I have maybe that would spill over into their life. And it has. So that's, that's the big driving factor for me, like, because it's easy again, to put ourselves on the back burner. And those days just come back to like, this isn't just for you. It's for the collective, you know, everything that you do impacts the collective. I love that because I was also just like crazy for wanting to like help everyone and save everyone and fix everyone. And I know we're really similar in that way. And, and seeing like, all the problems with in my different family members and just wanting like telling them to take this supplement and do do all these diets or whatever whatever I was doing and then really when I started to do this all this in the inside job on myself it it has spilled out effortlessly by putting myself first myself first and and um just really figuring out my own shit and and doing the inside job and taking the support and going all in and investing all in in myself that's just rippled out and spilled out into the people I love the most and they have completely been uplifted and healed and changed and and experienced more love you know they have more love and attention for me and more and so yeah and I know you you've experienced that too and you you touched a bit on it there so it's that's such a blessing right Yeah. It's so beautiful. Like that's what I've discovered. Like that's what life's about, you know, like that's, those are the moments that you remember more than anything, you know? So thank you so much. Like if anyone is struggling with this, like I said, there's a way out and Aoife has the roadmap, like take it from me. Like, honestly, my whole life has changed. I feel so much better on my day to day. And even it starts to, you know, compound over time. Like it really just becomes second nature, everything that you teach. Yeah, so it's exactly, it's like I teach you language. 
And like now I can hear you talking like you're so confident in that language and it's literally the language and an understanding of yourself and then you have that. So good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing openly, sharing your story, like you're a total hero and it's such an honor and pleasure working with you. And if anyone is interested, they can click the link. I'll leave it in the description for my next workshop, which is on Wednesday. It is Unlock Your Inner Healer. And so you can learn how to heal yourself from chronic health conditions and ditch all the health gimmicks and the diets and all the supplements and all the other crap and just get laser focused on what will actually work for you. Thank you, Caitlin. Lots of love to your little puppy, Bailey, and everyone else there with you. Thank you so much.